mine stays on theme with what we were talking about. Um, shout out to Bradley and Bojanski who were here earlier today and, and kind of threw out the suggestion and was like, Oh, that's actually, they didn't say particularly this, but um, I decided to do uh, the top five greatest coming out of retirement movies. And in terms of just like the equalizer, <laughs> this is a movie about, Someone who previous in a previous life they were a badass or they were a killer or a super soldier or whatever that might be, and they they've given that light up life up, and mm-hmm. something brings them back. And so, um, I I thought that would be good. I just it's kind of like the Equalizer. It's very on brand. Um, the Equalizer is not in my top five. I will say that mine either. Um, I have. A couple in here that will maybe someone will think like, oh, that seems that's not really what I would have thought. But uh, to start, number five, I have The Rock. We've talked about The Rock before, but uh, John Mason basically is supposed to be James Bond, who was arrested. Um, Sean Connery, who plays this character with Nicolas Cage back in the 90s. Um, Freaking love The Rock. And in that movie, Technically, he didn't give up the being like the badass he was, but he got arrested and is in jail for like 40 years or something. And, and he's forced they, out of retirement. Yes, and they bring him out so he could bust them into the uh, Alcatraz, and he, and he comes back with a vengeance like a badass. He takes out a full platoon of bad guy seals. Um, so, yeah, The Rock, one of my favorite movies ever. And then... A uh, movie we've talked about. I've got number four. I have taken um, this Liam Neeson movie was. I remember seeing it in theaters. I don't think I had seen the trailer for it at all. But like, I don't know how we ended up going to the movie. Someone was just like, like, let's go see this movie. So I went. Had nothing like no idea what it was going to be like going in, and it, that was a movie that I was like blown away of how much like fun it was. Mm-hmm. Like this is super cool. Like how we freaking go like pulling strings to take people out and to track people down and calling numbers back and you got that I he, there was so, you. yeah so many and memes I will kill you so much out of that <laughs> yeah. just That's such my great particular set of skills yes i have a very particular set of skills <clears throat> and I and like that you. was the one too like i mean how many how many movies has liam neeson made since then where he's like he has he's like That's an 80, him. he's an 80 year old badass That's who he is now yes because yes, of that. that's his character in yeah. every movie, even if it's not. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. World. He doesn't he's... do anything else anymore. He's like, <laughs> yes. I, Schindler's so... List, great. Rob Roy, great. Fuck, I'm taken now. I'm Qui Gon Jinn. Yeah, I'm, I'm just taken, gonna. Taken. I'm just gonna kill people now. Um, love that. So that is my number four. My number three is John Wick One. Um, we talked about it already. I freaking love that movie. I love the just when like. There, with the moment where he's on the phone with the dad, like the head mobster of mm-hmm. like the son who fucked up and killed his dog and stuff, when he finally, when the dad finds out, like it's John Wick, and then he like starts <laughs> basically planning. The best, part for... of that, the best part of that is when he's like, "Oh," and then he just hangs up the phone. Yes, like I love where, it. You, where it tells us the audience, like. Oh shit! It's like Wazamo telling him on the phone. A... It's John Leguizamo's character oh, telling yeah, him on the phone. Oh yeah, Sid the Sloth, the pest. Let's go. I like that was a cool moment of like, okay, we're this guy might be a fucking badass, and then I yeah. think that transitions into the sledgehammer to get his weaponry. So, John Wick number three. I'm sure a lot of people would have that at number one. Um, number two for me, of. Coming out of retirement, The Incredibles. Uh, this is a superhero movie. It is not a badass soldier coming back to kill people, but it is a coming out of retirement movie. Everybody loves The Incredibles. It's mm-hmm. one of the best movies, one of the best animated movies ever, and maybe one of the, and the one top one hundred. So one of the best superhero great. movies ever, too, for sure. Um, but Mister Incredible, the heroes are no more they have to go into retirement mm-hmm. 
two superheroes get married. They have a family. And then uh, Syndrome comes in, basically uh, brings them all out of retirement to, to be stopped. And it's a, uh, it's cool. Like there's literally like a Rocky montage scene in that movie where he's like, like working out, pulling chains. And it's like giant <laughs> trains that he's like lifting weights, but they're mm -hmm. in huge locomotives. Like just cool movie, fun movie. Love that. That's my number two coming out of retirement movie. And then my number one coming out of retirement movie is nobody that we talked about already. Yeah. Nobody is a badass movie. Howie, I think, was the one that originally told me to watch it because I'd never mm. heard of it. Mm -hmm. It had already come out like it had been in theaters and then had come out um, like digitally. Yep. And was like, was like, bro, you need to watch this movie. It's fucking kick ass. Mm -hmm. And it is awesome. It's basically about a uh, just an old white guy living like the like a super boring like just day-to-day -day life he's got a nine to five at a really boring job it looks like they do a good job at the beginning of the movie making you feel like he's miserable like doing mm -hmm. his day-to-day -day, making breakfast for the family taking the trash out and then he, he i think his house gets broken into and some stuff gets stolen his daughter's like bracelet gets stolen mm -hmm. and Somehow he's on a bus late a little bit later on. He's trying to figure out maybe who had done it. And like these three punk kids like come in and drunkenly start a fight with him. And he like brutally, yeah, brutally it's, beats yeah. their asses. And it's fucking awesome. And he yeah. then turns into the world's most badass killer. Well, yeah, of course it turns out those guys are like, that one of them's dad is a mobster, right? And then it's, yeah. yeah it's here, very John oh, Wick. here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah. It's like, it, it, but the it, best, the best thing about it. it is that it's Bob Odenkirk. That is yes. the best thing about it. Like the most unassuming, just yes. random, like <clears throat> run of the mill, 50 year old, 55 year old dad. Mm -hmm. And who just so happens to be like a, fucking badass he fucks dudes up in that movie mm. um and and basically you find out later on that he was like a badass like hitman i think um or maybe well, like, a like CIA. A, i don't remember it was like a cia it was like the kind of guy that made he made people disappear and for like yeah the, yeah, yeah like the government used for like, like the military and stuff yeah yeah like black he, ops, he's yeah. a black ops guy yeah for sure <laughs> like there's a cool scene where like he catches a couple of the bad guys when they all try to basically like a full swat team try to mm. come in on him on his house and all of a sudden yeah. he puts his family in the basement and that's also the cool part is his family has no idea so like they think yeah. that he's this most boring like oh, i'm assuming movie. guy and mm -hmm. it's fucking awesome so Number one, nobody. Go see it if I love you haven't. It. It's I love it. the best movie we've talked about so far today. I wouldn't disagree. I absolutely love your list. Um, surprisingly, I only we only have one that match. Wow. And, and here's the deal. Like, okay, so I, I did like 10 movies, right? And so when I had 10, like nobody was on it. And like, I even had Incredibles on my 10. So when you said that, I was like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, love that. But I did, but I went with my top five coming out of retirement movies. I even had Red on there, which if you've never seen Red, mm -hmm. um, it, it actually stands for Retired and Extremely Dangerous. Like, if you've never yep. seen that, Bruce Willis, Morgan yep. Freeman, John it's Malkovich, awesome. it's pretty entertaining. The first one's pretty entertaining. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, all right. So, number five, I had Logan. Um, Old, I old, think old about that. Wolverine coming out of retirement. Basically, he's kind of, he's driving a limo. He's, you know, he's trying to stay under the radar. He takes care of Professor yeah. X. And he kind of, kind of gets pulled back out into this world. And he has this clone daughter that he, you know, and, and there's a lot to it. And it kind of goes on a road trip. And there's a lot, he kills a lot of people in that movie. And it's badass. And it's like it's the first time we... First time we got to see like Logan slash Wolverine, Hugh Jackman do like the badass like yes. Wolverine kind of deaths that we wanted I, to see. And you know, and the thing is too is it's like they he's he's very old in the movie. Like they make him look old, 
right? Like his yep. healing power doesn't work the way it used to. He's aging. He's sick. He's, you know, whatever. And it's like, it felt so bad that we had all these Wolverine movies or these X-Men movies. And it was the first one where we actually got badass slice people in half Wolverine, right? Like yes. the comic books. Yeah. And then he, and then they killed him at the end. And mm-hmm. it's like, ah, oh, that's so unfortunate. And that's, I think why people are really excited for Deadpool yeah. with him, him in it, because they know Deadpool is going to be rated R and they know he going to kill some people and we're all excited yes. to see it. And so that's, and of yes. course it's delayed. Of course, but, I I thought about Logan for my list, but for whatever reason, like it didn't trigger in my head of like, did he come out of retirement or like he was just still being Logan? But you are right, yeah. and it is a great movie. Um, number four, I have Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ooh, Commando nice. is probably one of the lesser known Arnold action movies because mm-hmm. obviously it was after Terminator. But like it wasn't before it was before Terminator 2. So he was still not the huge star that he is now or was in the 90s. Right. Like this is an 80s yep. movie. Um, but basically like Commando, he's a retired like military badass. He lives like in the fucking mountains in the woods with his daughter. And they basically they like have a mission they need him to come do. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. So yeah. then, of course, somebody kidnaps his daughter and he's like, oh, well, yeah, guess what? Now I'm gonna kill everybody. And mm-hmm. that's it's a badass. His name and his name's like John Matrix in the movie. Like it's yeah. the most like <laughs> action words. And they pull two out and they're like, oh, we'll just put these together and make his name. But um, yeah, I always the, playing uh, college football when I would put eye black on, I would mm-hmm. always think of commando oh. cause he's yeah, like, cause he's got the, on his arms and he's, he's got the big stick everyone. too. It's, yeah. it's the big stick when he's putting so. it on, but yeah, it's a, it's a badass movie. If you've never seen commando, I highly, highly recommend it. It's got some super cheesy one liners in it too. Like it's, it's a good movie. Um, yeah. and number three, I had a history of violence with Ooh, Vigo classic. Mortensen. Yeah, so um, it's it's a it kind of has a, a nobody vibe to it without being as lighthearted because nobody even kind of has a lighthearted kind of goofiness to it. Mm-hmm. But basically, like it's uh, Viggo Mortensen, small, very small town, unassuming. He has a family. Um, I think he runs the diner in town. Mm-hmm. Basically, he's serving coffee, and some bad guys show up, and they basically they think he's this old mobster guy, and he's like, "Nah, you got me confused with somebody else." Yada yada yada. So then they're going to start some problems and start killing people. And he's got to just kill them first, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, or or, or is it like they come in and they cause a problem and he ends up killing these guys. And then they're like, it's it's the guy we think it is. And so it causes all these problems. But the cool thing about that movie, too, is it causes there's like some family conflict and stuff, too, because like he's he's not there. He's not who they thought he was. And then Mm -hmm. anyway, it's a really cool movie. There's not a ton of action in it. But the 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 build up and the story is great. Like in yeah. and it's in it's Viggo Mortensen and like like that dude's awesome in anything it's he's in. Like if Aragorn. he's fantastic in anything he's in. Like we've talked about Lord of the Rings and how how every casting choice in that movie was a damn home run. Yep. He he really has n- I don't know if he's ever made a bad movie. Like and this was a David Cronenberg movie and it was mm. Like David Cronenberg's Mr. Like body horror weirdo guy. And then he makes yep. this movie and it's fantastic. And if you've never seen a history of violence, highly, highly recommend it. Super good movie. <clears throat> Number two, uh, I Jane, had... James, James Gunn, I think has that ranked as like his favorite comic book. movie. Oh, his favorite comic book movie. Yeah. I think I've seen that before. His favorite comic book movie of all time. Um, and number two, I had John wick um, because I feel like if you're talking about, Somebody coming out of retirement and like killing a bunch of people. And I, and we didn't even like say they had to kill a bunch of people, but you know, yeah, it was um, implied. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was implied. <laughs> Shane Falco, the replacements, comes out of retirement. <laughs> uh, hey, technically classic. it would have fit, but anyway, um, yeah, John Wick, the original, we've already talked oh about it. Oh my god, this that would have fit. That totally would have fit. I kind of actually kind of thought about it. I'm like, he kind of, kind of comes oh, out of retirement. That was that would have been good. I mm. fucking love the replacements. Anyways. It's so good. Um, but yeah, John Wick, we've already said enough about it, but that's what I have at number two. And it was really close to being number one. But I went with what, what I think is probably the greatest Western of all time. Unforgiven, I had at number one. Oh. 
Unforgiven. I mean, like this was like, it came out when I was like eight or nine years old, right? I think it was like 91 or 92. I was pretty young. And it's like, I remember watching it with my dad as a kid or, or, and, and it was like, this, this movie's awesome. Like yeah. in so many ways. And then, and again, of course it's not a kid movie at all, like for a <laughs> lot of reasons, but that's why I am the way I am. <clears throat> but uh, Unforgiven is, it's the last Western Clint Eastwood ever made. And he said he would ever make. And it's basically, he's this, he's, he lives, he lives with his two kids. Uh, his wife's dead. Um, he's a retired old, like bounty hunter, piece of crap outlaw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And somebody knows who he is and they come and find him because there's this big bounty that he wants help with. And he's like, no, I'm done with that. I don't drink anymore. My wife's dead. I'm caring for my kids and taking care of my farm. And eventually he realizes he needs the money and he's like, all right, I'll go do this easy job with this guy. I'll make him do all Mm -hmm. the work and then I'm done and I'm going to go home. So basically he gets his old friend, Ned, who's played by Morgan Freeman. I'm just giving a quick synopsis if you've never seen this No, I love it. And uh, and they go and they help this guy. They do the job. And then he he finds out that they had killed Ned, the townspeople, and the sheriff, the nasty sheriff played by Gene Hackman killed Mm -hmm. ned and then the next like as soon as he finds out ned's dead he literally just picks up a whiskey bottle and just starts just downing it and you're like oh shit something bad about to happen (laughs) and it's in the in the 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 climax of that movie is an all-timer then he just goes nuts It's a classic it is a classic it is and it was and it was like 30 years ago so i mean clint eastwood was in his 60s when he did it yeah, you know, yeah. and it's, it's an, oh man, I love that movie. It's a good movie. Clint, he's a bad, I mean, I would even <clears> say <throat> that Gran Torino could be considered a uh, coming out of retirement. I don't know if you saw Gran Torino. Yeah, I've seen Gran Torino, him, yeah. But yeah. He, he's great at coming out of retirement in these movies. Yeah. And I mean, it, he is, and he's obviously awesome as a cowboy. You know, I mean, there's the man with no name trilogy, which if you've never God. seen those classic Westerns, classic. they are that talk about it. We've talked about great trilogies. That's one that probably doesn't get mentioned enough because it's so old. Yeah. And it got of... and it got better, you know? Yes. Yes. Like and the good and the bad, the ugly is the third one. And and I mean it's not and it's almost like they're they don't say they're sequels, but it's you know yeah, those, they, you know it's the same guy. Yes. You would <laughs> not know that I mean, unless you were living at the time that those movies mm-hmm. were coming out, like you wouldn't know that they were sequels of each other. Like mm-hmm. Honestly, I knew about all of those movies, but it wasn't until I got a little bit older and uh, yeah. actually went out of my way to watch them that I realized. Yeah, if you've never seen, if you've never seen a fistful of dollars for mm-hmm. a few dollars more, and the good, yes. the bad, and the ugly, because I think most people have seen the good, bad, and the ugly, but I don't know if they've seen the first two. Yeah, if you played the video games uh, Red Dead Redemption or Red Dead Redemption Two, or Red Dead Revolver, which was the original game that spark the other two like 90 percent of the main characters in all of those games are based off of the man with no name clint eastwood so and that's my that's my top five nice i love that the the, the interesting kind of uh topic of movies and no it's good we went way off track from what we usually do which i like yeah no i like i like that subject too and it's kind of you know it's one of those topics this this is really kind of fun to dig in and think about too Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and we both kind of had thought about incredibles and and um, as much as i wanted it on the list right on the outside looking at all right so mine's a little off the wall 